all many students have been uh, often asking me to make a video on what they should read and what materials they should follow for clearing the csir in a jrf examination so i thought to make one let us begin this video will be focused on what to read for clearing CSIR and GRF examination. And as we all know, for geology people, uh, this basically is earth, atmospheric, ocean and planetary sciences. So it means you have a lot of options over here for uh, attempting the questions of. Let us first look at the syllabus. So the syllabus consists of, you know, section A, as we all know, it is general science and aptitude questions. Then in the part B, the, it, the paper consists of general geology portion. So the earth and the solar system, earth's material surface, features and process means geomorphology, then interior of the earth deformation tectonics, so basics of structural geology, basics of oceanography. Then uh, we have the environmental earth sciences. So the part B is common for everybody. So this is what we can refer to as the general geology portion. Then in the part C, now it becomes more specific. Marine petrology, we can see all the things over here. Structural geology and geotectonics. Paleontology and its applications, sedimentology, stratigraphy, marine geology and paleoceanography, geochemistry, economic geology, pre-Cambrian geology and crystal evolution. Then applied geology, which includes remote sensing, GIS, engineering geology, mineral exploration, hydrogeology. For people who belong to geography background, you have geomorphology means physical geography over there, which has climatology portion, biogeography portion, environmental geography portion. So if you uh, uh, read some of these topics from the geomorphology or general geology portion, you will be covering most of these topics. Then meteorology, because it is atmospheric sciences also. So we have this climatology portion and believe you me, Climatology is extremely important as far as this examination is concerned. For people who belong to geology background, I can say you can safely skip this entire portion. This entire portion may be skipped because in Indian universities in geology, this portion, the, the physical meteorology portion, it is not taught in that detail. So if you leave these questions, you will have several other options to make up. Then in ocean sciences, the physical oceanography part, chemical oceanography, geological oceanography, and biological oceanography, this is very, very important. You have to go through all these. So let us first see what you can safely skip. So this portion is important. This is important. This is important. This is important. So entire part B, the general geology portion, you have to do it very properly. In mineralogy and petrology, you can touch upon the basics, the silicate structures, the cleavage patterns, the uh, typical properties. Then for petrology, I would say for igneous and metamorphic, for igneous and metamorphic, if you do the basics, that will be good enough. Sedimentology, you need to do in detail. So you can safely skip the complex uh, portions of uh, igneous and metamorphic, but the fundamentals you need to touch upon, okay? Now coming to structural geology, see, I have uh, time and again said this, that structural geology has been my weakness. So I would rather uh, shy away from structural geology. It is a very, very interesting subject, but then I do not have the knack for this, but still, if you uh, are going to read structural geology and geotectonics for this uh, paper, according to me, you should only read the fundamentals in this, the basic portion, different types of folds, faults, stress patterns. But then when you are going to solve questions on uh, complex things like Mohr circle or other uh, 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 detailed features of a structural geology, I would rather say it's better to skip them because you still have several other portions where you can make, make up for it. 
uh, but this does not mean that people who are well versed in structural geology and uh, uh, they like doing structural geology they should really do it it's a very scoring part and it's very very interesting also but for me if you take my advice you can skip uh, this the complex course the detailed portion of it fundamentals for everything you have to know paleontology and its application see when we talk about paleontology it is more of micro paleontology micro paleontology in that you have to uh, read about the calcareous fossil groups the uh, siliceous groups say uh, foraminifera radiolarians and all diatoms about the mega fossils, the mega invertebrates, I don't think there is any uh, question as such. But yes, a few questions on the uh, functional morphological aspect of mega fossils are there. If you watch my videos on paleontology, I have discussed in detail the functional morphology of all the major fossil groups. If you understand them properly, you can very easily uh, attempt all those questions. But then micro paleontology is really important. You have to do it. This portion, sedimentology and stratigraphy, is a must. You have to do it. Marine geology and paleoceanography, you have to do it. You cannot move ahead without doing it. So, uh, this entire thing, marine geology and paleoceanography, is very, very important. Now, this portion of geochemistry, again, I would say, barring the basics, you can safely skip this portion. You can skip the detailed geochemistry part. Economic geology, again, as I would say, except the fundamentals, you can also skip this portion. Okay. Now, this is very important. Pre-Cameron geology and crustal evolution. The, this is a part of stratigraphy only, but then it is a different type of stratigraphy in which the crustal evolution was happening. So, uh, the cratons, coal belts of India, the uh, uh, Archaeans and Proterozoic, uh, stratigraphic successions of India, they are important. This is an extremely important topic, the quaternary geology. You have to go through all of these, specifically when we talk about the oxygen isotope stratigraphy, biostratigraphy, magnetostratigraphy, the climates, you know, glacial interglacial cycles. These form a very, very important part of the quaternary geology, which you have to have to do. You cannot move ahead without doing it, okay? Now, this applied geology portion, I would rather suggest to skip it all. Leave it. Because uh, the, it's a lot of remembering things, which satellite is geosynchronous, uh, uh, what are the color patterns. See, if you are interested in that, you have the knowledge, go for it. But then, I would rather suggest not to take risk because sometimes these things, they become very, very confusing. This entire portion can be skipped. Indian geology, mineral exploration, hydrogen. Now, when we come to physical geography portion, even for the geology students, see this geomorphology, climatology, biogeography, uh, all these are important. The environmental geography and geography of India for people of geology can be skipped. This can be skipped. Because here, if you see what is it is asking, asking about earthquake, landslide. So, if you will read physical geography in detail or physical geology in detail, you will Anyways, read these portions, so you may not bother to uh, go in details of this. This In meteorology, as I told you, climatology is same as this geography. Climatology has to be done in detail, but then this entire uh, physical meteorology part can be left out. It's not required for you people. Ocean sciences, it is same as the oceanography part, marine geology part, but then this physical oceanography, chemical oceanography, uh, geological oceanography and biological oceanography, it is the most important topic. If you are going to read physical oceanography, you have to read climatology because then you cannot move ahead without studying topics like uh, atmospheric circulation or wind belts of the earth. If you are going to read about the ocean circulation, you, you cannot move ahead without studying the insulation, heat budget, temperature distribution on the earth, latitudinal position of the oceans and other things. Okay, So, this is an extremely important portion. Take my words. If you uh, do this part, uh, ocean sciences, the general geology, sedimentology, geomorphology, and of course the marine geology and paleoceanography, you are hundred percent going to get into the uh, list merit list of JRF uh, uh, qualified candidates. Let us look at the books. The physical geography, 
I would always recommend Savinder Singh. Savinder Singh is a very, very nice book in written in very simple language, giving you Indian examples. And if you go through this book, he starts with the fundamentals, the basic, the origin of solar system and all, and goes into detail. So uh, if you read this book, uh, Physical Geography by Savindra Singh, uh, you will come across chapters like earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, then uh, geomorphological features, deserts, landforms. So if you read it here, you, can, you will need not to go into detail while you are doing the uh, geomorphological part because then all th these will be covered in that. For geomorphology, I would suggest that William Thornbury, Thornbury's book is a must for studying the concepts of geomorphology, drainage pattern, types of landforms, uh, the depositional and erosional landforms, very well explained. But one drawback is that it does not give you the Indian examples. So you might need not uh, worry for that. You can read those from Physical Geography by Savender Singh. You will get all those uh, examples in that. And for any geology student, the Holmes principles of physical geology is a must. You should start actually his geology by reading this book. Now, this is quite old picture that I have pasted over here. But now this book has have had uh, several revisions. So, there are new editions have come in. You can very easily uh, look at those. Okay. Now, for the mineralogy part, crystallography part, the fundamentals, the basics. So, Dana's textbook of mineralogy, I would rather suggest you go for the normal class of crystals. Normal class. You need not go into detail of Herman Morgan symbols, motif and other things. Only the fundamentals of crystallography and fundamentals of mineralogy by Barry Mason. These two books, they are enough. So in mineralogy, uh, go for the silicates in detail. It's it's. There's one more book by Dexter Perkins. It's also a very good book. And uh, any of these, not all, any of these two books, you can use for the fundamentals of mineralogy. People who have taken admission to geology should always start petrology by reading this book, uh, Principles of Petrology by G. W. Tyrrell. This book is a Bible for those who wish to get their concepts clear for the uh, petro petrology portion. But in from this book, I would suggest you go only for igneous and metamorphic processes. Metamorphic. For sedimentology, we need to do in detail, as I have already told you that for igneous and metamorphic, we need to touch upon the fundamentals and the basics. So for that, this book is enough. It's a very small book, I think, uh, 200, 250 pages. You can read it in a day or two. Okay. Now comes one of the most important portion, the sedimentary petrology. This, this portion has to be dealt in detail. You should read about it because all the fundamentals and uh, other concepts, they are asked directly in the examination or they are linked with several other questions. So, the uh, portions of this which you have to read from this uh, book, the entire thing, all the 10 chapters, they should be read. Now, if you wish to read, uh, this, this book is very, very concise and it uh, gives in a very brilliant fashion the concepts and the advanced uh, things of sedimentary petrology only. Uh, if you wish to read more about the uh, 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 sedimentary rocks, you can always refer to this excellent book by Petty John. It's, but then it also gives you several examples which are not from India. But then this, this book, Sedimentary Petrology by Tucker, it deals only with the overall concepts. But Petty John is a very detailed book, so you might not need that for this examination. So Tucker, enough. For sedimentary structures, this book is very, very important. The sedimentary structure by Collinson, Montney and Thompson because uh, this portion is uh, uh, asked for the exploration part also. It may be directly asked the sedimentary structures also. This book deals in detail with all these structures as well as it also uh, discusses about the ichnofossils and their applications. So, sedimentary structures, this book is very good. You should read this. And for the uh, deposition sedimentary environment, there are several books, but I will always recommend the deposition sedimentary environments by Ranek and Singh. This book is an excellent book written by Ranek and Singh, and they 
uh, discuss in detail in a very simple language about all the deposition environments. So these three books, Sedimentary Petrology by Morris Tucker, Collinson Thompson Sedimentary Structures and Deposition Sedimentary Environment by Renek and Singh, you have to do it properly by heart. Otherwise, it's too difficult for, uh, for you to uh, do the questions for sedimentology. When we come to oceanography part now, this is the most important uh, portion of this examination. There is two books I would always recommend, uh, Invitation to Oceanography by Paul or Pinnett or Essentials of Oceanography by Truzillo and Thurman. But since I have read from this book, Invitation to Oceanography by Pinnett, uh, I am a bit more loyal to this book. If you want to build your concepts about oceanography, you should read all these 16 chapters. But then, for the exam point of view, uh, you can leave the first and second chapter. But second chapter can be read if you have some interest in the uh, uh, the evolution of the ocean uh, basins of the earth. They have written it less like a story. It's a very beautifully uh, written chapter. But then if you have less time, you can safely skip it. Chapter 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, they are the fundamentals for oceanography. You have to have to read them. Okay. So after you read these uh, 3 to 8 chapters, then uh, you will start to understand the concepts and processes of oceanography. After that, this chapter number 11, 12 and 13, uh, see off late lot of questions are being asked from these portions. Marine ecology and biological productivity in the ocean can be read provided you have time. If you don't have time, you according to me, you can safely skip these two chapters. And last three chapters, again, not required. So chapters 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, and 13, you have to read it word by word. Try to understand its content word by word. Now for paleo-oceanography, this book is extremely good. Uh, but this book is an edited volume and uh, it develops basic concepts as well as a lot of advanced research portions well. So from this book, I would rather suggest that you read the basics only and don't go into details of uh, the research oriented part. Okay. So for paleoceanography, this book is more than enough. For paleoclimatology, uh, wait, uh, I think there is a book. Huh? So for microfossils, for fundamentals, this book, Microfossils by R uh, Armstrong and Brazer, Martin Brazer, uh, this book you should read. It discusses in very concise language beautifully. And a new book has come by Pratul Kumar Sarasthi and M.S. Srinivasan, Micropalaeontology Principles and Application. Excellent book. If you get hold of this, you should read this book. So these two books will cover your entire portion of the uh, uh, micropalaeontology part. For paleoclimatology, this is a brilliant book. Paleoclimatology, paleoclimatology Reconstructing Climates of the Quaternary. So the Quaternary Geology portion, if you remember, this book is a must. Raymond Bradley. Uh, this book has been revised also. I think more editions have come in. This book discusses things like dating, then uh, 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 magnetostratigraphy, biostratigraphy, then how do we use proxies like uh, tree rings, ice cores, uh, marine fossils in reconstructing the climates of the past. And this book, chemostratigraphy, is important if you wish to read about the things like oxygen isotopes, uh, elemental analysis. See, elemental analysis and oxygen isotopes are also given in this book, uh, proxies in late Cenozoic Paleoceanography. But then I think for your level, that is slightly tough at for your level. For this examination, this book, chemostratigraphy, is perfect. You, you can always uh, go through the concepts part. The concepts and techniques, they have written beautifully in that. Now for paleontology portion, the mega fossils. I would always recommend these two books. Uh, Paleobiology and Fossil Record by Benton and Harper. This is a brilliant, brilliant book which discusses paleontology from a different perspective. They discuss a lot about the functional morphology portion. If you go through this, you will always be able to solve those questions in the examination. And this book, which has come in 2017, I guess, Shripad Jain's Fundamentals of Invertebrate Paleontology. If you are interested in paleontology, you can go through it. But I would rather suggest if you watch my videos on paleontology uh, keenly and you try to understand what I have uh, spoken in them, then you will always make up if you are unable to read these two books. 
or uh, you can always send me the questions also now for general geology portion for general geology portion planet earth by caesar emiliani is a must this book it seems that uh, caesar emiliani wrote this book from the perspective of this examination only of course this book was written long back in i think 70s but then uh, this is an excellent book discusses a lot of concepts on cosmology geology evolution of life and environment and you should read this book word by word if you wish to clear the section b the part b and chemical oceanography it's a must for the oceanography part written by valer broker brilliant book this book is also available on internet in form of pdf so you can download it from there and uh, this is an important book uh, as far as the uh, concepts of chemical oceanography are concerned now again a very very important portion climatology i think one book this one book by ds lal is more than enough i am i have started a series on uh, 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 the climatology but then you should read this book and there are 24 chapters i would rather point out to the most important ones for geology background people so chapters number 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then 16 17 19 20 21 19 is extremely important chapter it's very very important because several questions are now being asked on the classification of climate and all so uh, these chapters so second 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then 16 17 and 19 20 21 they are a must you have to read them word by word if you wish to clear this examination okay apart from these uh, you can also read a few um, you can also read a few books for stratigraphy first one is i would rather suggest geology of india geology of india by ramakrishnan and vaidyanathan ramakrishnan and vaidyanathan this is a two volume book volume 1 volume 2 volume 1 discusses the pre cambrian geology volume 2 discusses the phanerozoic geology of india see this book will if you read it full completely it will help you for other exams also it will clear all your concepts and give you immense knowledge on the geology of india but then if you are unable to uh, read it entirely just complete the uh, pre cambrian geology portion from this book there is also another book by uh, rs sharma cretons and fold belts of india cretons and old belts of india written by r s professor r s sharma this book this is known as lecture notes in geology that on four belts of india if you get hold of this book read it full your entire concepts for the pre cambrian stratigraphy of india will be cleared this is such a nice book he has written okay so i guess this video will be of some help to you all if you have any doubts, any questions, you are always welcome to ask me in my YouTube channel in the comment section or you can send me an email also regarding the same on Vikram Singh 2585 at gmail.com. You can always send me emails with your questions and queries. Okay, guys. So, good luck for your preparations. Thank you. We'll meet soon again in the next video of Climatology.